The road ends in Indianapolis for two teams, Duke and Butler, as we welcome you back to the Destination Indianapolis, presented by the all-new Infinity M. AOR, folks, Jason Horowitz, glad to be alongside MSG Network and Compass Media College Basketball Insider John Rossi, CBS College Sports is Steve Lapis. You know, guys, is it destiny and how much history is this for the fifth-seeded Butler Bulldogs in terms of being a five-seed? You know, it's not unprecedented. Five seeds have played in the national championship twice before. Teams seeded lower than five has won a national title three times. You were a part of that with eight-seeded Villanova. <laughs> Steve, how different has this run for the Bulldogs been? You know, I think it's different, but I still look at them as a Cinderella. I don't care. You come from the Horizon League, they're a very good team, no doubt about it. I think if they win the national title, even as a fifth seed, I think people will call it one of the great feats in the history of this tournament. When we won the NCAA AA championship in 1985, we had three pros on our team. Eddie Pickney was the 10th pick in the draft, Howard Presley was the 17th pick the year after, and Dwayne McClain was the first pick in the second round. So we had a lot of talent. Gordon Hayward, probably a pro, maybe the only one on the team that's a pro. So I'm still going to look at this as a major upset. You know, John, you and I have talked about this throughout the course of MMOD about what this team has done, knocking off Syracuse, knocking off Kansas State. Coach Krzyzewski said yesterday they had the toughest road to get to the Final Four. Now they have to go through Duke. Are you looking at it as David versus Goliath? Well, it definitely is because you got to look at this chemical makeup of this Butler basketball team. They play in the Horizon League with teams like Wright State and Cleveland State. And let's get a little perspective right now. Our man to my left. You coached Manhattan in the MAC conference in the late 80s. If somebody told you you could play Duke for a national championship in Madison Square Garden, that's what this scenario is going to be like on Monday night. And it was impossible. It wasn't happening in a million years. And a lot of this has to do with what's happened with the NBA and guys. If Blake Griffin is still playing, Kevin Durant's still playing, I don't know if Butler's playing for the national title. You know, having said all that, though, if Gonzaga were playing Duke, we wouldn't be calling this David versus Goliath, and they play in the West Coast Conference, which isn't that much different mm -hmm. than the Horizon League. Butler, you could argue, this decade has done as much as Gonzaga has done. But when I think you look at Gonzaga, you think of more perennial power. They were in the Elite Eight in 1999 before they lost to Connecticut. Butler is an unknown, but the difference in those two situations right now, the building behind us, Lucas Oil Field. We are in Indianapolis, and I'll tell you what, if it's David and Goliath, the slingshot is in David's hands right now. There's no doubt, but you know, I think one of the differences when we're talking about Gonzaga and Butler is Gonzaga. A lot of first round draft picks mm -hmm. coming out of there too, whereas Butler has had none. So I think there is a difference. I think Gonzaga's been on the national scene a little bit longer, and the Ronnie Toriafs and the Adam Morrisons and some of the great players that come out of there, they've had more first round picks, which I think makes a difference. You know, Brad Stevens and his players today during their press conferences uh, heading into tomorrow's national championship game, they said they they relish the fact that they're David. And the reason is, David won. <laughs> David did beat Goliath. So let's not forget about that. I, I want to throw this out there. Kansas is a six seed. They won the national title. Of course, Villanova is an eight seed. And NC State is a six seed. All three of those teams knocked off a top seeded team in the national championship game. What will it take for that to happen tomorrow night? It's got to be all about Matt Howard. He needs to play better offensively than he did against Michigan State. He's had a problem staying on the floor. Not only does he have to stay on the floor, he has to give them something offensively. I think Butler's margin of error is a lot smaller. They need their three guys, Matt Howard being one of them, and Shelvin Mack and Gordon Hayward to all play really some of the best games of their lives. I think this Duke team right now is built a little different. They're built so that if they make threes, they're unbelievable. If they don't make them, they still have a chance to win because of what they're doing on the glass. So I think this is going to be a tough spot for Butler against Duke. And we'll do a full keys to the game a little bit later. And uh, Matt Howard, he's got to be on the court. He banged his head yesterday, left the game. And Brad Stevens said he's not going to practice today just in case to make sure he is OK. That'll do it for Destination Indianapolis, presented by the all-new Infinity M. But don't forget, go to cbssports.com slash memorabilia to enter the Inspired Coaches sweepstakes and your chance to win a, a autographed basketball signed by all four Inspired Coaches. For John Rossi and Steve Lapis, I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care, folks.